you've been following along, I'm just about finished up with my hunting bow. Just got a few little adjustments and figuring out my hunting arrow setup. First off, a kind commenter gave me a few useful tips. Because I'm a three under shooter, I should run my knot set about five eighths inches high. And marking the center of my string so I know to always draw from that point will help improve my accuracy. So I'm going to go ahead and move my knocking points up to five eighths. I had them at a quarter. I knew they were supposed to be high, I just didn't know how high. Um, then I'm going to mark the center of my string with some braided fishing line. I just wrapped it around the string a few times to give it a little bulge right there that I can feel with my middle finger. Now if that looks a little low to you, you'd be correct because I did my math wrong. Uh, so I had to go back and redo that. So I've been using these aluminum shaft arrows because they were the only arrows I could find off the shelf that were 30 inches. But I knew I needed to go ahead and figure out my hunting arrow setup. That way I could go ahead and practice with those arrows. So I've got these Easton Carbon Legacy arrows in two different spines, 400 and 600. I wanted to try 500, but they were out of stock. I've also got some different weight tips to use along with these arrows. And I'm going to set up a camera, shoot my target, and watch the film in slow motion to see if we can pick up on some differences in these arrows. So the spine refers to how stiff the arrow is, and the smaller the number, the stiffer the arrow. So this 400 spine arrow is stiffer than this 600 spine arrow. Now that's important to note because arrows shot out of a bow like this have to be flexible. Because when they're released, they have to bend around the bow due to something called the archer's paradox. They also have to bend to stabilize their flight path. And that also has a lot to do with how much weight is on the tip of the arrow. So I'm basically just doing a redneck science experiment here in my backyard. And after looking over the footage, I want to adjust my knock set one more time. I'm just moving it about a sixteenth of an inch down. And I hope all that talk about spine and Archer's Paradox and science experiments doesn't give you the impression I know what I'm talking about because I don't. You're watching me learn about this stuff in real time. I do have a little bit of a compound bow background and some of that stuff translates to this um, but a, some of it doesn't and this has been a big learning experience for me but I've really really enjoyed it. Now I'm going to go from a 100 grain film point to a 125 grain and compare these shots.
Now let's swap out our 125 tip to our 150. I think this shot here is a good example to show you what I'm looking at and looking for. With this heavy tip and this stiff arrow, it takes this arrow a long time to recover on its flight path. At release, the arrow doesn't bend much, it just kind of bounces around the boat. The slow-mo on the camera is an awesome tool to use with this, but there's still a lot of feel involved too. The arrows are really fast, just a flash in front of your eye, but you would be surprised how much you can pick up on in that quick flash. So I spent much of my afternoon shooting, changing tips, comparing shots, more shooting, more comparing shots, and I feel like I came up with a combination that felt pretty good to me. And that's the 600 spine, 125 grain fill point. Here's that shot in real time. I am proud of that. So here's my hunting arrow setup. For my primary broadhead, I've got a Magnus Stinger Killer B. It's a 125 grain fixed blade broadhead. For hogs, coyotes, and backup, I've got these cheaper Allen Company Photon broadheads. They're also 125 grain. Then I've got one of these small game broadheads held in by a magnet up here. Uh, it's got these spring things on the front and they're supposed to help the arrow from diving under leaves and roots. And lastly, I always like to carry a field tip with me just in case I want to practice shooting a stomp or something. So I went and had those arrows made and a few more to practice with and that's what I've been doing. Just practice, practice, practice. Uh, coming from doing some compound shooting, it is really unnatural for me to get the arrow that high up on my face and look down the back of it. Uh, normally with compound shooting, you've got the arrow somewhere around your lip or cheek with the string coming across your nose or chin. Uh, it's just a whole different anchor point on your face, which is a lot to uh, get adjusted to. Also, I noticed I'm bending my head over a lot and I'm trying to be more mindful of keeping my back straight. But I'm starting to feel real comfortable about 15 yards and in with this which is pretty close for a white-tailed deer, I have to admit. Um, but I'm itching to take this thing hunting, and it's the middle of hunting season here where I am. The deer around here is starting to rut, and I can use that to my advantage with this. But one thing's for certain, i got to be close. So, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe to stay up to date with how the hunting goes.